Hey everybody, this is Gabriel Miguel. I'm the CEO of the Anastasia Foundation. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about like, what is this Anastasia Foundation, right? What is this nonprofit that I keep talking about in all these videos? Why am I so passionate about this idea? Why do I keep bringing this up all the time? So I wanted to give a backstory, right? When the Ringing Cedars movement started, when Vladimir Magri published these books in the 90s in Russia, I'm not as sure exactly what year it was, but they formed the Russian Anastasia Foundation shortly after. It had to be like 1997, 1998 or something like that. And by 1999, I believe they had an internet forum. They had a forum where readers of the books could come and discuss everything. And so since basically it all started in Russia, they had an institution to provide organization and a central place for all the readers to go to get information, get news, find other people who are trying to build kin's domains, find other like-minded people, get, uh, you know, kinds of resources and information. They have a dating section on their website where you can meet your soulmate. Like I said, you may have heard, but I met my wife on their website. And there was a lot that they did to bring some cohesiveness and organization and unity to the movement in the beginning, which was completely fundamental to the success of the movement there in Russia. Um, I think if you go on their forum, they've had hundreds of thousands of posts, like to this day, it's still very active. They have done all types of, you know, events all over Russia. They've done, you know, they've published so much news. They are a central place for the readers to go, right? And so what's very interesting is that in the English speaking world, the books were published in 2006, I believe. The first Anastasia book in English was published in 2006. And I don't believe ever since then that there was any kind of institution or organization that tried to unite the readers and perform a similar function to what the Russian Anastasia Foundation did. I believe there may have been some forums for a short time, but they were shut down. Uh, I believe there may have been two. I know that there were some groups of readers that had come together and were working towards advancing the Kins Domain's idea and, um, and trying to move things forward, but not in a larger community kind of way like what we're trying to do. And so I started getting into this in 2014, like a little bit about my story. I read the first books um, well, my first book was in 2014, shortly before my birthday. At that point, I, I grew up as a, as a kid who spent a lot of time on the internet, and I used to frequent a lot of different forums, and I started to look, like, where is the community for this, right? Where is this Ringing Cedars community? Where can I find more people? So I start typing in Ringing Cedars forum, and I click, and the one link that I do find is shut down. It's just like a 403 error and it shut down. And I start to think to myself, I'm like, why for something this important, right? <laughs> Just, you know, really think about it. For something this important, uh, this world changing, this fundamental to life on our planet, why is there no place where I can really find and meet other readers and discuss things with people? I was to me, it was so like, it was almost like, a, this is a crime against humanity if I can't find other people to talk to. So I took it upon myself to start a forum in about 2014. Um, at that time, I was personally in my life, I uh, barely had, you know, a dollar to my name. Um, and, you know, pretty much was just uh, a young guy trying to make his way in the world and didn't really have much in the way of financial resources and uh, I mean if I was to give you the whole the whole picture um, you know I, I certainly wasn't uh, super ahead in life at that point but at any rate I decided to build this forum and we started connecting a really passionate group of readers I met one of my best friends in the world um, through this early forum and 
a lot of my first Ringing Cedars friends came from there. And uh, one of the first people who, I think the first other Ringing Cedars reader who I ever talked to, I had met. Um, hi, Donna, if you're watching this. Um, I hope you're doing good. Um, she was the first person I met and uh, from the forum. She had messaged me and I messaged her and she told me she read the books and she was waiting to meet somebody. And so the first people I met were through these forums, through this forum. And, you know, I made a lot of incredible friends. And uh, the, the small group of us started to get together um, and we decided to just start working together. So we would meet weekly um, for a while. And um, basically in 2016, we wound up having our first readers gathering in New York uh, on July 23rd, yesterday. Happy Dachnik Day to everybody. I hope you all had a beautiful and blessed day and happy birthday to Vladimir McGree. So July 23rd, 2016, Vladimir McGree shows up for a readers gathering we have in New York and we have maybe 60, 70 people in the room. It's fantastic. And um, I've done everything I can since 2014 to try to connect people and try to build a community, building an online community. We have a forum, we have a Facebook group, we have a Telegram group. We're making these videos. We have a Kins Domain directory where you, people can submit uh, their Kins Domain and, and if they're inviting other people to join them and create a settlement, you can submit that and be listed somewhere on a map and other people can see. Uh, there's so much more that we're planning to do and getting back to my original point, I wanted to say that we are trying to, I don't think there's been anybody else that since then, I haven't seen anyone trying to do anything like what we're trying to do. Um, if there has been, I didn't see them. I'm trying to, to see, but I haven't seen anybody that's trying to build an actual community organization right? A bring the community together, unite the readers. Because what I see is that these books have sold at least 700,000 copies conservatively, right? If you go on the Ringing Suitors Press website, uh, they say 700,000 copies. I don't know how updated that statistic is, but if you factor that in 700,000, a million copies, something like that. And then the used book market where these books have circulated like wildfire, how many people can you estimate have read these books? you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, a million more after these books have been published since 2006, you know, you can really start to think, right? That's, you know, 15 years of these books circulating and circulating. And there's a ton of people who have read these books. And the problem is that everyone is scattered everywhere. Everyone is scattered and they're doing their, their own thing, which is beautiful. I think it's beautiful and it's needed, right? God bless everybody who is working towards making their dream a reality, certainly. At the same time, if we're trying to build a, a movement and we're trying to really get this kin's domain idea and start creating settlements, because there still is not even really an example of a successful, even small to medium scale kin's domain settlement in, in North America. And so the Russians are way ahead of us, guys. You know, we gotta start catching up. So what I want to say is I think what we're trying to do is very needed. I think that what we're trying to do with this idea of the Anastasia Foundation is essentially something like what they did in Russia, right? Providing a place where all the readers can go and meet each other, get news, inspiration, resources, events online and in person. We do, we do, uh, every week we have an online event happening. It's either the guided kin's domain meditation with Ariane, which is amazing and I highly suggest that you check that out. Or we're doing the community connection calls where last time we had like 30 people on a Zoom call. And no one seems to leave them. You know, everybody stays on the, the entire call, um, you know, and it, it goes really well. So what am I trying to say is that 
there's a lot that we're trying to do. We're trying to become a, a pillar or kind of an institution for the movement that people can come to get resources, meet other people, meet their soulmate, meet their friends, meet their future neighbors. Other people want to build kin's domain settlements with them and connect everybody. That's what we're really trying to do. And also we have a, another goal of getting donations of land and giving that out to the readership. Um, I used to work with a nonprofit that uh, essentially is a network of um, ultra high net worth individuals. So people worth more than $30 million. Um, in the network, there's about 6,000 people. There's philanthropists, social entrepreneurs, impact investors, activists, um, people from high net worth families. There's about 150 billionaire families in that network. I spoke to, you know, maybe hundreds of people over the years uh, that I had attended these events and, and worked with this nonprofit. And I had so many people tell me that they wanted to donate land. They, they, I would explain to them what kin's domains were. People that you would never expect would care or respond to the kin's domain idea. And they, their eyes, every single time, their eyes would just be like exploded. Um, huge wide eyes. They couldn't believe that something like this existed. I'd tell them what was happening in Russia. I'd tell them what a kin's domain is. I'd tell them what a, a whole settlement of kin's domains was. I'd tell them how many there were in Russia. I'd tell them how many people read the books in America. And I received so many people who wanted to support this idea. So many people who wanted to donate land. So many people wanted to donate money. At that time, um, because I stopped working with this group in about 2019, um, I you know, I wasn't ready to receive these kinds of donations or to, to operate at that level because there, there's a certain kind of capacity that we need to have in order to, you know, receive land and receive large donations and actually do things, right? But I have a huge network of people. These are my friends. And I am waiting for the moment when I can start to reach back into this network and, and talk with these people and start to get things going, right? This whole billionaire story from the book, you know, I, I maybe, I, I don't think I know the richest man in the world, but I know a few very rich people. And um, what am I trying to say is I'm trying to do everything I can um, to essentially tap into the, the philanthropic or private wealth resources of, you know, people in North America and distribute those resources to people trying to build kin's domains without any strings attached, right? Um, the, the economy is different here than it is in Russia. Uh, this That's a possibility here more so than it is in Russia. So this is why I talk so much about this nonprofit, right? This is why I talk so much about this Anastasia Foundation thing. This is, this is what the plans are. Um, we're trying to do, you know, more in-person gatherings. We're trying to build this online member community where everybody has a profile and can message each other and meet their soulmates and make friends and all this stuff. And so these are what our goals are. Another goal eventually is to find teachers from Shatinin school in Russia and <clears throat> try to either create a teacher training program where people can go and have, uh, you know, become competent in the method and in Shatinin's method of teaching and bring that over to America. Right and, and create a, a brand and an identity around Shatinin's teachings in, in North America and make that a commonplace method of education like Waldorf, right? Um, we would, you know, there's so many goals, but people want to donate to educational causes as well. I believe we are the only people in North America who have been trying to work at the Ringing Cedars vision in this kind of way. We're the only kind of people who are trying to make an organization, an institution, a large community for, for everyone. That's my goal. That's my passion. That's what I'm doing with my life. And that's, that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm filming this video. And so I wanted to give you that backstory about what we're trying to do. We're trying to be the Anastasia Foundation, like in North America. We want to connect, unite everybody, give everybody all the information they need everything um so you should go look at their website they have a ton of stuff um but we have our own way of doing it right we are 
we speak English, we're from North America, we have our own culture, our own way, and we're going to do things our way, right? And so I hope that gives you a bit of a backstory. I hope I sounded coherent here. I hope this all makes sense. Um, I really want to invite you to donate to the fundraiser. Uh, we're at about $200 a month out of $950. This is needed for the baseline operational cost of our nonprofit. Basically, yeah, just go to the website, AnastasiaUSA.land slash donate. You can make a monthly donation there. Anything you can donate would be very appreciated. I hope that gives you a, a good backstory of everything that we're trying to do. There's so much that we're trying to do, guys. So much. And basically having this nonprofit set up would allow us to start taking these large and significant donations, right? Like taking $50,000 donation, $100,000 donation. I mean, this is a reality. Uh, I, I do websites for nonprofits um, and so nonprofits and other conscious businesses and I get to talk with a lot of different organizations. One organization that I talked with, they basically had just barely formed their nonprofit, right? They do birth work. They do birth centers across, uh, they fund birth centers uh, owned and operated by black indigenous and people of color, people across North America, like 25 different birth centers, community birth centers, holistic birth, like birth in the water, good stuff for, for people in the city who don't have access to that kind of thing. Anyway, they had just barely formed their nonprofit and they had met a woman from a foundation and she said, you're doing the kind of work that would have taken me five years of research and development to do and you just saved me all that time for doing this kind of work. So." I want to fund you. And she writes them a hundred thousand dollar check. Boom. Just like that. They had just started, right? This is a real story. That's what I'm saying is possible here, right? Like once we actually have a foundation, once we're actually able to start putting ourselves out there, we can start to bring in these donations. And this all goes back to the community guys. This all goes back to, to us and everything that we're doing to you. Uh, this goes, this will all go to building the movement, connecting people online and in person and making all this content possible. Uh, I had to check my time on the on the camera, but I really hope you get my vision at this point and, and where we're trying to go. So thank you for your support. Again, please go to the website, AnastasiaUSA.land slash donate. Help us bring this vision to reality. Help us do what we're trying to do. Uh, everything you, everybody's support is appreciated. Um, like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm to bump us up in the rankings, more people to see this. And uh, I'll talk to all you guys soon. Thank you so much.